Good day, good day. I'm gonna be today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make a recreation of NASA's space shuttle. Now, I, the first space shuttle I made, it was kind of over the top, uh, being uh, kind of the world record for the largest space shuttle ever. But this is gonna be a more realistically sized one. Now, first you want to go to the orbiter. I would advise using the Mark III cockpit and then the large cargo bay. Then after that, a Mark III monoprop tank. After that, now most of these parts are obviously intentionally made for the space shuttle. So after you have the uh, final engine mount, we want to use the Chris Vector engines, the KS-25. Don't know why I said Chris. After that, you have one that would go. Hold up. Now, this is 100% live commentary. Actual. Uh, got it. These are kind of wacky sometimes. Then, these second ones, the reason I'm not doing it three times the symmetry is. I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit later. Now, I would strongly advise having Kerbal Engineer Redux on this thing. It is a lifesaver when trying to build any sort of asymmetrical craft. After that, we're going to go with an aerodynamic nose cone, uh, right here. Don't know why it's so far away. I'm going to do a dark one, just to go with the, whoa, not really kind of used to the SPH, but the SPH is a wonderful place to build. I'm going to try to start using it more. After you have these bad boys on, you want to find the big S delta wing which will go right on the bottom right here then obviously this is improper angling so we're gonna move it up to right here I'm gonna move it forward a little bit so we can fit the elevons elevon 2 and elevon 1 I don't know why they don't just have one large elevon, it seems kind of an inefficient way of doing it to me, but I'm not, I don't work in squad, so my opinions don't matter. So after that, I also like adding the big S wing stake, also rotating it back up, boom. Then obviously back into this wing right here. Now this looks kind of nifty itself. But this is missing one important thing. The NCS adapter, which will go right here. Now I'm just going to move it over a little bit this way, this way, and this way. So now it's in like this. Now I'm going to move it forward a little bit so it's more flush. Okay, good. After that, I like to drain it out of liquid fuel. So, now we have the main orbiter left. We're going to add in the puff engines. Now, I don't know why they're like this, but I'm going to move it forward like that. But, anyway, right now is when uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux is important. Because actually, I'm gonna add in the landing gear first. <clears throat> and on like a normal airliner, this thing would use only the small landing gear in the front. And depending upon your personal, whoops, that's backwards. Depending on your personal preferences, some prefer to use medium landing gear here. But I'm for this one, I'm actually gonna use the small landing gear. That looks about good to me. And now one of the most important parts is keeping it stable. So we're going to want a big, whoop, not two, only one. We're going to want the big ass tail fin. Now that we have the big ass tail fin on, we're going to want to only have it do yaw. And these ones are not going to do yaw at all. <clears throat> So now that we have this, then we can start changing up the monopropellant engines. So we're going to want to have angle snap off on this one. 
then the torque you want to be as close to zero as possible with these on. Hold up, I'm actually going to add in some batteries, reaction wheels, and a few RTGs on the inside of here. I'm going to start off with the reaction wheels. These are just some stuff for mods. The rest of the stuff is 100% stock. I have two of these bad boys in here. And then, uh, one docking port. No, not Junior. Now, I have recently, um, whoop, angle snap is gonna be on for this. Now, I have recently started building a space station that uses the, um, Clampatron docking port normal style. If you have a one that uses junior or senior docking ports, I would not advise doing a only junior docking port space station, but if you prefer to do it that way, I'm not going to judge you. So, uh, after that, I'm going to have a senior docking port on here, and in here, I'm actually going to have a claw. Why am I having a claw? It's so that if we want to, let's say, take debris out of orbit, you can easily grab it with the claw. And after that, we're just going to close the cargo bay. We can actually have some cargo in here, but uh, for right now, I'm not, and these are a little bit too far in. Much better. I had this in a little bit too far there. Okay, that looks a lot better than the wing sticks. Uh, also, out of whack. Okay, that looks beautiful. Now, if we do have a, um, let's say, payload in here, so I'm just gonna put an orange tank in. Okay, I'm not gonna put an orange tank in, it isn't fitting. I'm just gonna add in a, uh, tug to my space station. Now, as I said, my space station uses junior docking ports, so we're going to want this thing to be using Now we're going to want to have this mono propellant in here off, so otherwise, actually I'm just going to have this on. I'm going to disable crossfeed. This way, the engines right here will only drain out of right here and right here rather than draining out of the tug itself. So after that, as you can see, the torque goes up without it in. When you do have it in, it goes down. So, at first I'm going to try to get it down to zero with the payload out. How I'm going to do that, angle snap off, as you can see down here. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to move it down to the three. This way, when I add in this thing, yeah, it's around 2, so I'm going to have it go to down 2.5, well, too much. I'm going to lower my mouse's sensitivity. Okay, my mouse has a custom sensitivity on it, so most mice can't do this. Oh, I rotated it the wrong direction. Oh, I messed it up. What? What? Did someone just break? Oh, I don't have it. <laughs> That makes sense. Perfect. So I'm gonna move this back up to around 1.2 way. Okay, it's 1.2 way here, 3.19 there, so I'm gonna move it down to 2.5 again. Ah, damn it. Well, we have that one around 2.5, this one is right at 2.05. So that's close enough. 
So I'm going to close this now. Now, what we want to do is... I'm going to have these set up retracted for obvious purposes. After that, what we're going to want to do is... We're going to want to be able to control this thing. Uh, sorry, while docking, we're going to want to control this thing. So what I like to do is have angle snap on the front of this thing. I'm gonna have center of mass on for this, but isn't necessary. After that we're gonna want to have another one on it facing Looks good enough to me. So I'm going to move this one down. Yeah, that looks good enough. For those of you who do not know, you can hit C to toggle angle snap. That might have been a better thing to say earlier on in a video, but please tell me, okay, good. I want to actually angle this thing a little bit out. I'm going to add in one more right in the bottom. Please add. I'm also going to angle this one out a little bit. Then I'm going to copy this entire thing by holding Alt and pressing it. Then I'm going to place it at the back. Or in the back I'll have it be right here. That looks good. Then that looks good. Okay. So now that we have those things on, I'm going to move the wings back in. Somehow I moved it too far out. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm kind of new to the SPH. Thanks, good enough. Then does this look messed up? It's fine. I'm gonna move this thing back up here. And now, the orbiter is complete. 13 minutes in. Not that long, but... 13 minutes, 45 seconds to be precise. Anyway. That's all pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna... Right below, directly below the, um, whatchamacallit center of mass, as you can see, press this thing to toggle it, you'd want to have a, hi, whoops, other one, you want to have a hydraulic detachment manifold, oh, uh, sorry for that one, uh, after that, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to use a, um, one of the big carbidine tanks, or if I'm going to use a, I'm going to use the smaller tanks for this one. Where are they? Nope, definitely not that one. That looks good. Now I just didn't want to use one of the massive ones like this. These ones are substantially small. You know what? Screw it. Okay, good. Now that we have that one... Oh. 
Thank you. Now that we have that one on. Whoops! I used the wrong one again. Now that we have these ones on. I had this a little, up a little bit too high. You're going to want to mess, finish up with this staging. You're going to want to have the monoprop engines go last, then the vector engines go first. So now, as you can see, stage two, that's the one with these, have a what? Oh yeah, I forgot to add in. Enable crossfeed. Now, as you can see, we have a torque of only 11,000 kilonewtons, which might seem like a lot, but it is. So the way we do this is by changing the angle of these ones. And this is the reason I have these ones on symmetry down here, is that you can do fancy stuff like this. Oh, 5 kilonewtons, that's pretty good for this stage, but we can do better. At 1.8, that's good. I'm gonna change it some locally. Zero point four, that's wonderful. I'm sorry I was quiet for a few seconds. I was having a gamer concentration. I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> um we can use uh aerodynamics instead. Now the way NASA did it, they had a fancier looking way of doing it. It was not directly like this, but yeah, it works off again. It's fine though, we can change them. We haven't locked it in. I'm gonna have these ones a little bit. I'm gonna have the detachment manifest. Detachment. I can English. I'm gonna use a kickback booster. Now we can uh, land them with a parachute, but um, yeah. Like NASA, they landed it with a parachute. We want these to be lower. We haven't mirrored yet. But one parachute, it looks kind of flimsy. So I've actually been doing this for a little while. If you look at my uh, the craft file on my world record uh, shuttle video, you'd actually see I did the same booster setup. What we do is we just have five of these little booster things. And you're like, wait a second, that looks way too. Oh, I really messed that one up. It is fine, it is fine. All I need to do now is just... Hold up, actually. We want this thing to look cosmetically cool. We have Making History DLC. If you don't have Making History DLC, you don't need to do this. What I like to do is get structural tubes. Never mind. We can do this, trust me. Yeah, okay. Control Z to undo. Never mind what I just did. You saw nothing. Okay, good. So now what we need to do is move down one, two, three. One, two, three. Ah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we can see clearly which ones need moved forward, forward. Which ones need moved backwards. Eh, 
that's good enough. We're gonna have to settle with one or the other. I'm just gonna settle. This one's good. Now that's, that's just for cosmetics. It does affect aerodynamics slightly, but not enough to matter. Besides, this is Kerbal Space Program. Earth is much smaller. Now what we can do from here, if you have making history, if you don't, you do not have to do this. Just fast forward a few seconds. Or you could just give me watch time. I would prefer that. But, ha, I don't really care. I'm not a sellout. A watch time is wonderful. It isn't this, this, yeah, English. Now, uh, as you noticed last video, if you watched it, my mic was dying, and I have received a new microphone a few minutes ago, and that's why I was recording this. I was about, I cannot, I still can't speak. Medium, medium, sh nope, medium long, yep. I'm just gonna leave it like this. That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? But, as you might notice, hopefully, wow, that's good. But I'm expanding my headset some. It's jamming into my head. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah, I had it much smaller than it should have been. But, what up? You want this to be out of the atmosphere. So, yeah, the torque on this thing is really off. So, I'm gonna have to modify it some again. Yay! <laughs> Fun. Okay, that's good. Just gonna do it a whoop, a quick test. Yeah, that isn't good. Wrong way. Yay! So much fun. Just gonna see if that looks better. I just had it the wrong way. Ah, oh, not perfectly balanced. That's perfect. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So, now I'm just going to add in a few struts. Now, you might say, but, TFK, struts add extra weight. Therefore, you must not use struts. Blast me, even NASA used struts in the Space Shuttle program. If you don't believe me, then, uh, I'm not gonna cite my sources. Look it up yourself. I'm, because I'm not 100% sure I'm right. But I'm like 90% sure I'm right, and that's close enough. Well, I wouldn't bet my life on a 90% choice. It's still good enough. It's still an A in West Virginia. It's still an A in West Virginia. Now, I know that in NASA, son of a gun. Child friendliness, YouTube algorithm. Haha, -ha, yep. If you do this in uh, the VAB, symmetry will actually mess up so much, this part will be impossible. So strutting is a lot harder with a asymmetric craft in the VAB. The more you know. So now that we're here, I'm gonna close this again. And... What now, but... Now? This is wonderful. Only took half an hour. Oh wow, this is gonna be a long video. And the way a space shuttle launches, it launches backwards. I forgot to mess with stuff.
<sighs> so, as I was saying... Now, uh, you want to move the, um... You're gonna want to move the, uh, boosters. Because they detach at around 20 kilometers in altitude, I think. So, you're gonna want to move them... Hello? Now, right now, it's at only 11 newton kilonewtons, but right here, 22 kilometers, it's at 131. Oh, God's plan. Now, 72. 42. So, you're gonna want to lower your sensitivity. Go off angle snap. Sixty-one. Fifty-four. Close enough. So I'm gonna say this as the YouTube shuggle. Shut shut shuggle. YouTube. I wasn't typing. YouTube. Capitalization. YouTube shuttle. Now we have this thing saved. We're going to go over to the VAB. Hold up a few seconds. Okay, good. I don't like my headset. Okay, good. So now we're in the VAB. If you want to grab this thing, it will automatically rotate. And have it so that it faces backwards, the way you want to launch. Now, if you already have something that's going against curb and rotation, or if you're playing with the realism overhaul, I salute you, against the Earth's rotation. But, if you have a start, if you have a space station that is going towards the rotation of curb in, you want it to be facing backwards, away from the way. Because, when the shuttle launches, it actually goes backwards, and it flips that the shuttle itself is facing the ground, rather than the tanks, which should face the sky. So then you're gonna add some launch clamps in. Launch clamps to save the day. So you're gonna want to have the launch clamps go during the second one. Okay, good, so now we have a perfectly functional shuttle. And then when we launch this thing... Kerbal Space Program takes a long time! Space Shuttle Challenger, everyone! It's still playing the flames audio, I don't know why. Revert to vehicle assembly. You always know what they say when this happens. More launch clamps. More clamps here. More clamps here. And more clamps here. Save. Wonderful. I'm so excited. Take two. You know, it would have been nice if the uh, US shuttle program would have had a revert option. Because, as you know, many of the space shuttles did wind up having the same incident that I just had, where they turned into a giant ball of flames. Which is, obviously, not what you want. But this time, no explosions. All is good. I'm turning on the lights already. And we, uh, Valentina is currently up in space. You want to launch here? I messed up staging! Yay. Might turn on a volume there, that was a little bit loud. I literally could not even hear myself. Yay, I messed up staging. Take three! <laughs> I'm slowly beginning to hate the shuttle. More and more, with every single breath I take. 
take three. I'm gonna. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot Sceptrons and Parachutes and Deploy Shoot. Anyway, at least we got to admire a beautiful solar eclipse. You know, at some moments, Kerbal Space Program, the graphics, ne never cease to impress. This is actually beautiful. Everyone, take a screenshot. And also, you can see by the curve of Kerbin, Kerbin is round. The flat Kerbin society is going to claim this is all a lie. But anyway, I want to revert to vehicle assembly. I'm going to remove these launch clamps. And one thing I did forget to add was a parachute. As some of you guys know, when the shuttle, the oh yeah, cherry light, I don't, what? I do not remember installing any mod that came with a cherry light. I'm gonna have this thing go down here. Now this parachute is actually... Uh, I'm gonna turn off my mic. Uh, okay, yeah, I have my mic button right, it goes right here. So, where my mouse is right now, that's where my mic but turn off button is, so that took actually a... Uh, it's the most inconvenient place to put it. Anyway, now that we have everything except the Sceptrons, correct again, we're gonna add Sceptrons. Now that we have Sepatrons in, I want to have it going local. Holy add. Now that we have the staging still messed up, now that we have staging wonderful again, we can save this thing. As you can see, our torque is pretty good after we release the launch clamps. Oh my gosh. After we move the launch clamps down again. Make sure you check your staging, I think that's the moral of today's video. Anyway, I'm not going to launch this, but, uh, yeah, I might launch a little bit later. So anyway, my next video I'm going to release is going to be how I prefer to build space shuttles, such as my world record shuttle, the Uber shuttle. My previous video, you can check it out, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And I'm probably going to focus my Kerbal Space Program videos on sh space shuttles, because it's actually a really fun thing to be able to fly. Anyway, as for now, that's all I have, and I'm out.